Living in the amazing Northern Rivers on the east coast of Australia, shooting on the beach is something that I do a lot. Sometimes it comes with the territory of what I'm shooting. For example, if it's surfing or if it's a destination that we're showcasing. But other times the beach is just a really easy and reliable place to be able to go and get photos or videos that look great. For almost any kind of content or stories that you're telling, the beach is a spot where you can go and get some cool B-roll. It's public space, so you often don't need permits as long as you're not interfering with public access. So it's a great option for easy, low budget shoots. It's also a place that is full of challenges, which make filming and photography really tricky for people who aren't prepared. I've seen some disasters occur when people were simply not prepared for the situation, or they didn't think about all the elements that would impact their shoot. So that's why I thought I'd compile some simple tips to help anyone who wants to plan a shoot at the beach. Some of these tips might be obvious to those of us who are at the beach on an almost daily basis, but they address mistakes that I've seen people make time and time again. Nobody wants to go home without getting the shot that they had in mind, or even worse, go home with a drowned camera. If you plan ahead on your next beach shoot, you'll be able to make sure that you get home with the shot and with all your gear as well. The first tip is to shoot early in the morning. Now this really applies to just about any type of images, but if you shoot right at sunrise or even earlier, then you'll be able to take advantage of the softer morning light. When the sun is lower in the sky, it's also a lot easier to bounce, diffuse or flag the light that's hitting your talent. So it means you can achieve your desired look with less crew and less gear. Whether you're planning to shoot front lit or back lit, this tip applies equally as the thing you generally want to avoid is overhead midday sun that's going to leave harsh shadows and raccoon eyes. This is even more important at the beach because there's usually nowhere that you can go and shoot in the shade when the sun is higher in the sky. Another reason to shoot early is to avoid the wind. Late afternoons can deliver the same soft, really nice lighting as the mornings, but they often come with the challenge of more wind, particularly on the coast. So as the land heats up during the day and that hot air rises, cooler air comes in to replace it, usually from over the ocean. So on most coastlines around the world, particularly in warmer climates, this will result in a strong onshore sea breeze in the afternoon. Not only will this wreak havoc on your talent's hair or any scrims or reflectors you have set up, it'll also make the ocean in the background look really angry and cover your camera and your gear in sand and a salty mist. And it's definitely not going to make for a fun shoot. If you do have to shoot in the afternoon, look for beaches inside sheltered bays, um, coves or rivers. Uh, these will be protected from the wind and prevent your shoot from being total chaos. Finally, another great reason to shoot really early in the morning is that you can avoid the crowds a lot more. Not many people are hanging around the beach at 5 a.m. in the morning, so it's a great chance to get clean backgrounds without people constantly interrupting your shoot. And that can also make the talent more comfortable as they don't feel as though there's 100 pairs of eyes gawking and watching everything that they're doing. Of course, even in the early mornings, it can still be too windy as well, so make sure that you know what to expect beforehand with the weather. Again, knowing the weather really applies to any shoot, but it's even more important at the beach where you're out in the open and exposed to the elements. You really don't want to get caught in a sudden rain shower when you're carrying all your gear and you have nowhere to seek shelter. And obviously when you're so exposed to the elements, the weather is going to play a big part in how your final shots look. So if you're aware of the weather beforehand, you'll know what looks you're going to be able to achieve and which ones are maybe gonna be less achievable. As an example, these shots here were taken on a day that had been pouring rain all day, but I knew that there was a good chance that the sun would light up the clouds for just a moment as it went down and that we'd be able to get some kind of moody shots at that time. So by timing the shoot perfectly, we were still able to get something cool out of an otherwise horrible day of weather. Along with knowing the weather, it's absolutely critical that you know what the tides are doing on the day of your shoot. Knowing this will help prevent disaster and get better images as well. I've often seen people at the beach with their cameras and they'll put their bag down on the sand without realising the tide is coming in and within a few minutes their bag's being swamped by waves while they're distracted taking pictures somewhere else. The flatter the beach is, the faster the tide can move in. So at somewhere like Broome in Western Australia, where there's a big flat 
broad beach and a large tidal coefficient, the tide can really suddenly rush in, covering up a few hundred metres of sand within the space of a few minutes. By far the safest time to shoot on the beach is during an outgoing tide. An outgoing tide will mean that any wave surges will travel progressively less and less up the beach. So even if you place your camera bag down near the edge of the water at the start, it has a good chance of remaining totally dry. The good news is that this outgoing tide is also the best time to shoot images on the beach. So when the tide's high, there's often not very much beach area available to shoot on. This means that there's also lots of foot traffic moving through a small area, so the sand can end up getting really ugly looking from all the footprints. But as the tide recedes, it leaves behind more space and freshly groomed sand with all the footprints washed away. So this gives you a perfect backdrop and a perfect surface for posing talent on. A receding tide will also leave the exposed sand damp for a short while, which means it will reflect light really well. So this can let you get some really cool reflection shots or splash some more light and color into your backgrounds to make your shots more interesting. You'll often hear lifeguards and surfers use the phrase, never turn your back on the ocean. While it's obviously hard to avoid it completely while you're focused on shooting, you should always be keeping some attention on the water. The ocean can be really unpredictable and sometimes things can change really rapidly. Occasionally a set of waves will come through that's significantly larger than anything else that day. So you need to always leave room for error when choosing your spots. And this is particularly important around any rocks. And at all times, you should have someone responsible for keeping an eye on the ocean, whether that's uh, an assistant or a director or it's you yourself. Also, make sure you communicate with everyone present to make sure that anyone who has their back to the ocean has someone looking out for them. Also, pay attention to the ground around you. Things like damp sand or damp rocks uh, or debris like seaweed or driftwood can give you a really good in indication of where the water has the potential to reach even if the waterline is a long way away from there at the current point in time. Safety is always the number one priority when shooting, so if you can't get a shot without having safety measures in place, then you'll have to figure out another way to do things. Sand and salt do not mix well with cameras, so it's always a good idea to have the minimum amount of gear practical while shooting on the beach. As I said earlier, shooting in early morning natural light can avoid you needing to set up extra scrims or reflectors, so that means your C-stands or frames won't get exposed to the salty air unnecessarily. You should really think about your lenses beforehand so you can minimise lens swaps. Using zooms is a great solution as it avoids extra lens changes, but if you really must use primes, try to select only one or two focal lengths and put together a shot list, even if it's just in your head so that you can get all the stuff on one lens before moving on to the other, rather than swapping back and forth the whole time. The less you have to swap lenses, the lower the chance that you'll get sand on your sensor, which is something that you really want to be avoiding. It's also a good idea to use a filter on your lenses at the beach, even if that's just a clear or a UV filter for protection. That way, if you get any little bits of salt water on the front of your lens, you can wipe it away with a t-shirt or a cloth quickly, without worrying about scratching an expensive lens. When you bring all your gear down onto the beach, you wanna make sure that you have somewhere clean to put it all down as well. A tarpaulin or a picnic rug can work, but even better is something with sidewalls on it, like a big plastic tub, or even a beach wagon, like the ones that you can pick up from a camping store. These will let you put your gear down somewhere that's clean and free of sand, plus offer protection from the wind so that your gear is less exposed to the salty sea breeze. Overall, the less gear that you bring onto the beach with you, the less stuff you'll have to worry about while you're trying to focus on shooting. While the beach is a fantastic place for shooting, you still need to think about all the usual amenities that people need during a shoot. So things like access to water, toilets and parking are things that people often overlook when planning a shoot anywhere, but can be more challenging at the beach particularly as the best, most pristine locations are sometimes the most remote or hard to access. Make sure you work out where the best parking and access for your location is, as you might end up having to hike quite a bit to get onto the actual beach. Bring plenty of water with you, and you might also need to have one of those pop-up changing tents if your talent is going to be doing a lot of wardrobe changes. Also be sure to know where the nearest hospitals are, and whether there's any lifeguards nearby in case someone needs first aid. 
you should also figure out an accurate location in case you need to provide it to emergency services. If someone steps on a stonefish or if the camera van gets broken into while you're out of sight, you want to be able to give emergency services an exact location as beaches can be several kilometres long. Sometimes beach access paths will have a signposted marker number which you can quote to a phone operator. But if not, make sure you know which road you access the beach from. That way if you do need any assistance, it's really easy to direct the emergency services where to go. And this is all worst case scenario stuff, but you always want to be prepared before any shoot. There's always a chance of something going wrong and your level of preparation can determine how bad the outcomes are. There's nothing that bugs me quite as much as the feeling of sandy toes inside damp shoes. I can guarantee you that no matter how delicately you walk on the beach, you'll eventually end up with sand in your socks if you're doing a shoot on the beach. Take your shoes off early to prevent this issue or else you'll find yourself stopping the shoot midway to take your shoes off. Shooting in bare feet also gives you a lot more freedom on the beach as you can go right down to the waterline and not worry about your feet getting wet. The last thing you want to be doing is limiting yourself creatively because of wardrobe choices that you made. Having bare feet and trousers rolled up to your knees might be the dorkiest look imaginable, but it'll mean you're less concerned about getting your feet wet or about where you can step, which will free you up to get better images without restrictions. So let's recap those tips. Shoot early, check the weather, know the tides, pay attention to the ocean, use minimal gear, know where all your amenities are and take your shoes off on the beach. I hope these tips make it a bit easier for you next time you're planning a shoot at the beach. Thanks for watching and if you found this helpful then consider subscribing to my channel here. If you have any questions about shooting on the beach then drop them below and I'll try to answer them. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.